recording in progress. It's very difficult for most people. You know, they realize that uh, Christianity becomes a chore. You know, it's something that they have to do. It's something that they have to, uh, to, to say or to dress a certain way. And uh, all these natural things, which are okay. They are nothing, there's nothing wrong with them. But what I'm saying is, it is necessary to do the right thing at the beginning because we are supposed to be dead in Christ, you see? And when you are dead in Christ, it means you are a new creature that has been created. Like if you look at Romans 6, 6, knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So it means when you uh, repent, repent is you're going this way and you make 180 degrees turn going the other way. So when you repent and you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, as Bill, Acts 2.38, that is the beginning of the new man. So when you go under the water, it's showing that you're going under into the grave of water, cold water or whatever, warm water. And then you come up a new man, a new uh, person, a new wife, a new husband. Because your life from there must show changes that you are now a different person altogether. Because when you find out later on that your life, you've been in the, say, the message for 50 years, but your life is still the same. You're still going through the same things that you were going through before you became a Christian. Then that becomes a problem. And there is another problem about the grandchildren in the message, the grandchildren in the churches. Just because you were born in there means nothing. It's a good start. But you have to have that personal experience with God just because your parents are holy, it doesn't holify you. You have to go through the same pro pro process of death, burial, and resurrection. Let's look at uh, the, the scripture here in uh, 1 Thessalonians. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So when you are uh, regenerated, that means you can't die. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You can never die because you've become a new creature. That means your old self has died and a new person has just come into you and you are now a new creature, a new something. Everything you do is different from what you used to do, you've been crucified in Christ in Galatians 2.20. That means you are now a new person. Let's hear what Brother Brenham says in uh, 1957, the eagle uh, stares, stares and nerves. You are not willing to die to yourself. Therein is the key, brother, sister. You are not willing. I am not willing to die to myself and sacrifice everything that you are brother, for the cause of Christ, then shame on you. And then in God's way, that's been made for us, he says in 1952, nothing short of being born again will work. Jesus said, except a man be born of water and spirit. Many of us have been born of water, but not the spirit. He will in no wise enter into the kingdom. No wise, no matter if he's Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian in the message, uh, whatever church, Scientology, whatever he is, he will not enter until he's born of water and spirit. Born means he is changed. You metamorphosize into something else. He has to die before he can be born. So you got to die to yourself be reborn again in Christ Jesus. That is right. That is where most of us fail, to be honest. Because what happens is we come into the message uh, and begin to follow Christ in everything that we do. But what we forget is 
Are we really dead to the world? Here are a few pointers, something that I've gone through before, because everything I talk about, if the, the issue that I am looking at has not helped me, then I do not talk about it. Because the Bible says, such as I have, I give unto you. So everything I preach on, it is something that I have seen, I have experienced, I have seen in others, like Brother Branham and all this, in their lives, how they changed to metamorphosize into something completely different. Something new, because you're not that old person, you're the new person. People will hate you. If you, you, you will still walk around the same kind of people who are not Christians, it means you have not changed yourself. Because if you still love the things of the world, then you're not of God. Let's look for a few examples that we face in, uh, in our lives. Let's look, the, 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 the worst one is uh, racism. How do you react? When people are racist to you, how do you take it? Do you fly off the handle? Or do you say, I forgive you? Remember Jesus Christ, when he was on the throne, what did he say? Blood oozing from his head, going through his eyelids, all the way down to his feet. He opened his eyes and look down at his persecutors, those who were killing him. Yet with all the pain that he was going through, with all the sins of the world that he was carrying, he still said, Father, forgive, for they know not what they are doing. So that is the antidote. When somebody is racist or tribalist or whatever, any, anything that they do to you, you must always remember, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Because it's something that God does for you inside. And it's something that you keep. You have to keep on praying for, for that change to come into you, to be able to be renewed. That's why Paul says, my, my, I need to be renewed, to be transformed into a new being. Because on your own, on my own, we will never be able to, to achieve this. So how do you react even in marriages? Always angry with your wife, always angry with your husband. How do you react? Because when you, remember, we are, we are talking about dead. What is dead? If you go in the morgue, I've been in a few. If you go in the morgue, you go in and there's many bodies lying there. If you go and you can kick anybody in that morgue, they will not complain because they are dead. That's the kind of dead we're talking about. When you're dead to the world, it means even people, when they insult, insult you, you're dead to it. You don't react to it because you are dead in Christ. But as long as you are reacting, as long as you have uh, things that you do that are not right, as long as you want to fight all the time when somebody says something about you, then you are not dead, brother, sister. You need to go to Calvary and say, Lord, kill me, kill me. I think Brother Branham actually says, what you need, first of all, is a killing. Once you've been killed, then that means you're dead. And then when the spirit of Christ comes on you, you become alive, but alive in a new, as a new person and a personality. That means you, you are now living the, the life of Christ. That's why Paul says it's, not, it says, it's no longer I that live it, but Christ only always living in me because he is living within you, just like the devil's. Devils are useless as long until they find a body to work in. So if it, there's no body for devils to work in, that's why you see when those devils were cast out of legion, a thousand of them, they requested from the Lord Jesus Christ to go into the pigs. Why? Because as long as they don't have a body, devils are useless. So as long as God does not have a Christian's body, he can do anything because he has made it a partnership between 
in us and him to achieve this eternal goal, this purpose, plan, and program that he designed before the foundation of the world. It is a human instrumentality that is in there because we are partners, co-equal with Jesus Christ through the cross. So we need to go and die. When people talk about you, you don't worry about them. When people are in a circle and they're always negative, you move away from the circle. Find a new circle of people that are positive, people that are always looking because you can't have faith when you live in a negative environment. You can't have faith when you're always uh, looking down or looking up to things that are bad. You can't have faith. You can't even please God if you don't have faith. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that we do not see. So we have the authority of the word. Say, for instance, if you're praying to buy a house, Mark 10, 28 says, I will give you houses in hundredfold. But also remember, it also says, all these things I'll give you, but they come with persecutions. The, where we fail is when the persecution comes before the house is uh, delivered to you, you fail on the persecution. You must accept it and say, Lord, this is part of what you said, because there was a reason Jesus said that. Things don't come easy. You have to fight every inch of the way in order to achieve what you want to do. So it's always good to realize that until you are dead, you are going nowhere. And we hear of brother, a sister, during Brother Branham, she was a black woman. She says uh, at the Christian business men uh, uh, meetings, she comes out and says, I just want to give a testimony, you know, the Southern draw. She said, I is not what I want to be. And I is not what I ought to be, but still I ain't what I used to be. But if you have not metamorphosed or changed, you are still that very same person that you were before, then your Christianity is in vain and in much pain because there must be a marked change from what you used to do and what you do now. Because in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Paul tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if you are still sitting into that, in that old person, in that old creature that you were, then you have labored in vain and in much pain because there's got to be a change that comes through to you to change you into something that is different, something that you never knew about. That's why the world will never be able to understand Christians because we live on a different planet and we also move on, a di on different fuels. They might be moving on power, paraffin, but we are moving on a, a fuel that's way higher, a spiritual fuel. And I want to give you an example of Brother Branham from before when he was, uh, before he became a Christian. He says here in the Questions and Answers, uh, 1959, and I said, I could never be a Christian, but let me tell you, that night down yonder on a high avenue, when the Holy Spirit came into me, that settled the temper. That was over. I said, I would never do it. I would never be a Christian because I would never get over that. I said, something that's born in me is testifying of his genealogy. How he, because a temper can be passed on to your children. So whatever you are, you pass on to your children. So I said, boy, my daddy was hot-headed and my mother, half an Indian, enough temper to fight a bus. So I said, me, oh, I, boy, anybody that jumps on me is going to get it, that's all. That's what I'm talking about. When people jump on you, what do you do? When people talk about you, what do you do? When people insult you, what do you do? Do you insult them back? He said, yeah. I said, if I ever have to climb on a step ladder to hit them. That was before he was converted. 
I said, I'll sure do it. But now you could drag me out there, wallop me. Why, not me. What am I trying to make a point here? Something happened. That old power, that old William Branham died. Someone else came in. And it makes me feel sorry for my enemy. When anyone does anything wrong to me, I never pray against them. I pray for them. That is when you know that you have been changed from death unto life. It's easier through psychology to stop smoking, drinking, or even committing adultery because you're now a Christian. But when you get to this point where you feel sorry for your enemy, just like our Lord Jesus Christ did through all that blood in his eyes, he says, Father, forgive them for they know know what they're doing. And the truth of the matter is, all the people in the world, they haven't got a clue. They don't know what they're doing. Many of them think this life is the end of it. But when they die, that's why when you will see people dying, you can almost tell whether they're Christians or not. Christians die peacefully in the bed there, just peacefully. There's no, but many people who are not Christians, where well, as soon as death strikes them, they start fighting. Many of them can't even speak, but now they're fighting all their limbs because now they see the reality of what Christianity is all about. We as Christians, we have a view that most people don't have, a knowledge, zero, that most people don't have of what will happen hereafter. When anyone does anything wrong to me, I never pray against them. I pray for them. How many times, brother, sister, have you knelt down and said, I curse that man. I curse this one. I curse that one. I curse my husband. I curse my wife. And yet, the Bible says, love your enemy and pray for those that despisefully use you. Pray for them. Here's another quote from Questions and Answers, 1964. I had a woman one time. I went to have to cut the lights off because Brother Branham used to uh, work uh, uh, cutting lights off or switching them on. If people didn't pay. And that day I had hair on the top of my head. She said, you little kinky-headed idiot. I told her, I said, woman, you ought not to kiss like that. Oh, don't you fear God? She said, you little kinky-headed idiotic, if I wanted somebody to talk to me about things like that, I wouldn't get a half-wit like you. Ooh. Then she called me a blankety, blankety name. There's the racism. There's the tribalism. They call you a name. Oh, my. If that had been a year father, I always said a man that would strike a woman wasn't man enough to strike a man. But I might have broke that at that time, calling my mother a bad name like that. But you know what? It never even fazed me. I said, I'll pray for you. Never bothered. I know right then something had happened to me. Yes, sir. Oh, my. When it happens, brother, sister, you know that something has happened within you. And that something is Christ living in you to such an extent people will tell you things will denigrate you will talk about you will backbite you will shout at you but because you're dead in Christ it will not face you but until you get to that position where you don't feel it you don't hear it, you are still alive. You need that death, burial, and then resurrected a new person. And remember, you can do it. I can do it. You can only do it by ingratiating yourself to a higher power, which is God himself. That's why I find that people possessed of evil spirit, evil spirits, they've got more power than a normal human being. So imagine that perverted power can do 
great things. Great things to such an extent, a man who was a big shot at the company will end up living in the alley, wearing cardboard boxes, all the Pierre Cardin suits, he don't wear them anymore because he allowed an evil spirit to live in them. How much more when you allow the Holy Ghost to come and live in you? If the devil can do it in a perverted manner, how much more can God do it? We need to move a little higher. We are in the last stages of this world. The rapture is coming soon. And before we are taken into the rapture, we have to be born again. We have to be born again. We have to be a new creature. And if you are born in church, that's okay. But you have to go through to the Holy Ghost. You have to receive the person of Christ in you to be able to conquer the world on your own, on my own, I will never be able to conquer the world. So the lesson today is, are you dead or are you still alive? Are you dead or are you still alive? Is Jesus living in you or is it the devil living in you? So you need that change to metamorphosize into something that is new. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Shalom. <laughs>